Man, the Kingdom Hearts 3 premiere demo was amazing. It was so good, so much fun, and I can't wait to touch all my impressions. It's overall a great experience. Yeah, well, that may be true, but me being bad, I was able to detect a lot of bad stuff in the demo as well. I mean, it was mostly good, but still, it could use some work. I mean, that's not to go without saying about the ugly. What? Wait, what is this? I, are you insinuating that I am the ugly between the three of us? No, I truly detest this personality trait that I have been forcibly called upon. You cannot call me to be like this. I... No, I will not be part of this video. No! Well, maybe because you're ugly on the inside. I am not the ugly! Yeah, man, look, whatever. As I said before, there's a lot of great and good aspects of the demo, but like I said, there are some bad aspects, and since he's here, you can't deny there were some pretty ugly aspects. There were some visually, aesthetically, and undesirable aspects within that demo, yes. Only some of my ethical expertise can understand that. But we gotta make sure we get everything down packed so not only Square Enix can know, but the viewers can know how we experience the demo. How are we gonna do that? Well, there is one way we can settle this. Hey guys, HMK here. As many of you would know, I recently had the grand opportunity to be among the first to play Kingdom Hearts 3 at the Kingdom Hearts 3 premiere event. I want to thank both Square Enix and Disney from the bottom of my heart for not one, but two invites to two of the select groups and times, the morning influencer group and the evening VIP group. Due to that, I had a bit more time to play the game and gather my thoughts on the demo that was present at the event. The overall demo experience was amazing. The aesthetic, the gameplay, setting, and sound were really top notch, but the game wasn't without its kinks, and there were a bunch of them. In my impressions, I'm going to talk about everything I liked, everything I felt that was wonky, and everything that bothered me from the Kingdom Hearts 3 demo, and these aspects will be marked under the good, the bad, and the ugly. The demo consisted of two worlds, Hercules and Toy Story and I've played both worlds on both builds of the game, the PlayStation 4 build on a PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One build on an Xbox One X. I've got a quite a bit to cover, so let's get right into it. Let's tackle Sora's moveset first in Kingdom Hearts 3. It felt really good, in both regular and in second form. In the demo build, Sora has one regular slash as his opening strike, and then it goes right into his finisher string, which seems to consist of multiple different finishers, but only three of them will land before ending the combo. Luckily, the demo had Combo Master on, so I was able to test these out. On the ground, he goes into his new triple slash that we've seen in trailers. He has Blitz, Guard Break, and a new light-based AoE finisher that seems to be something similar to what we've seen many use in Kingdom Hearts 2 and in Dream Drop Distance. For the air, he can perform the same new triple slash, what seems to be a watered down version of Hurricane Blast and the light AoE finisher that he does on the ground. The combos feel nice and are strung along pretty well, but it's unclear what determines which finisher goes in what order, although the light finisher will always go last, but my guess is that directional input will be a factor. The combos feel like they have good weight on them on the ground, but like previous Kingdom Hearts games, Sora will stay in the air until the combo is complete. However, many have been asking me about the floatiness of Kingdom Hearts 3, and the combos definitely give me the answer, but I'll address that in full later on in the video. But I should note that the first strike that Sora does in the air does not have him drop until the animation is complete. Unlike Kingdom Hearts 2, where Sora would drop while doing the first strike if nothing connects and continues the combo. When it comes to second form, Sora's moveset will change to reflect the moves that they had in Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2, which include Explosion, Ripple Drive, Hurricane Blast, Aerial Finish, and Magnet Burst. 
While these moves do feel familiar, you can tell they have some Kingdom Hearts 3 flavor to them. When it comes to the moveset of the actual Keyblade transformations, I'll get to those in a dedicated segment later on in the video. While in second form, you have the option to use limits while in that form. However, you can only use one as a finished situation command before reverting back to base form. From the beginning, you'll have access to stun impact. But if you build on that situation command through the arrows, you can turn that command into Sonic Blade. And then you can go even further from that from Sonic Blade into Ars Arcanum. While I was able to do all three, stun impact Impact and RS Arcanum felt pretty powerful, but Sonic Blade didn't feel like it lived up to how good it was in Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2, but I was mindful that this was a demo and that this was an early part of the game. So I'm sure that not only will it feel stronger in the final build, but there'll be a way to have it leveled up as you play the game. One thing to say about these limits is that the timeout on extending them, and for most things in the game for that matter, felt a bit more strict. What I mean exactly is that the game is less forgiving in the timing it takes to execute some of these commands where the window of opportunity is smaller than what you expect from past Kingdom Hearts games. Which isn't a bad thing, and I've found in certain aspects it'll get your reflexes on point, but I do see the need to find a balance for this. Overall, Sora a many times felt good to control, but there are some pretty bad times in my experience, so Sora's gameplay gets a good, but it segues into something ugly, which brings me to my next point. The vastness of worlds and traversing them. Now don't misunderstand me, the size of the worlds isn't an issue at all. I love how big the worlds have become and the source movement through them is something to marvel. But, and this is a big but, some aspects of Sora's traversing these now expansive worlds need work. One of the biggest things I've noticed right away when playing the Olympus portion of the demo is that when trying to control Sora in the opening part of climbing the mountain, it felt like there was some slight invisible force jerking Sora to move in the right direction and it felt super off. However, this feeling and movement gradually went away as I got up the mountain and it was completely non-existent in the toy box world. So when I brought this up to a Square Enix staff member, they explained that the demo was created to be more accessible so that everyone attending can enjoy and that there are many people there who haven't played much of the Kingdom Hearts series or play video games in general, either kids of the Disney family or VIP attendees and Disney personnel and voice actors. They also said that considering Kingdom Hearts has a huge Disney aspect to it and the game is going to be E10+, many younger players will be giving this game a shot. So in that regard, I do understand, but I asked if a feature like this could be turned off and the answer being unknown. Hopefully with harder difficulties, this type of hand holding will not be in the game. That was definitely one of the bad things I experienced in the demo, but it's something that could easily be fixed or at least be optimized so it doesn't hinder the overall flow and experience. Diving feels really good in this game. In order to proc Sora's free fall, you're gonna have to drop from a pretty high altitude and then Sora will go into a skydive which looks fantastic from any angle. And if there are enemies below, you can strike instantly from any point of the fall with a powerful shockwave that not only looks great but feels nice in execution. That's a good. Now we come to the wall running, something that I know almost everyone was looking forward to thanks to the epic trailer show beforehand. Now there's a lot of wall running in this game, like a lot. And when I first tried it, it felt a bit stagnant, in which Sora cannot strike from side to side while ascending, which is the impression that I got from the E3 2015 trailer, nor can he perform the acrobatic jumps while running up the wall like we've seen in the same trailer, which definitely put a hamper on the fluidity of what wall running was originally imagined to be. At most, it felt a bit limiting, so I wish it would be a bit more liberating. I feel like I'm playing Snake when running up the wall in Olympus, dodging rocks being dropped by the Rock Titan. Sora can ascend and run to either side horizontally in a jerk reaction in order to dodge obstacles and navigate the wall. This is one of those experiences where I felt it was bad and the wall running was something that you're probably going to use a lot in Kingdom Hearts 3. I would like for it to be optimized to be more fluid for the sake of not interrupting the flow and frustrating the player, which I said before that optimizing traversing these big worlds is crucial. So that gets an ugly for me. That leads me to my next point, athletic flow. Athletic flow is the evolution of flow motion from dream job distance. Now it has some good takes and some ugly takes. The good is that it cannot be abused like it did in dream job distance, where you can use it to jump endlessly over towering obstacles or reset the ridiculously long dash. From what I played around with, not only is the dash distance greatly shortened, but the amount of times you can bounce off the walls in an athletic flow has been reduced to a cap of 3 when I tested it beforehand, in which it resets once you hit the ground. Also, I'm pretty sure you can only jump once off an athletic flow bounce and that the dashing into a wall after that won't reset the jump. That is the good and it feels a lot more balanced. 
Now, the ugly is that it doesn't feel right in terms of visual combination with contextual feeling. It's a bit hard to describe if you don't have the controller in your hand, but it mainly has to do with the relation of the rumble and how it conveys to what you see on the screen. It feels hella off. Like in Dream Job Distance, even though it was mad abusable, it felt right and elevated the experience when doing it. It's like it's out of sync in Kingdom Hearts 3, especially with the segment in the Rock Titan boss fight when he is downed and you gotta jump off the sparkle points to reach his head. It looks cool, but it doesn't translate at all what's in your hand. In the Kingdom Hearts 3 E3 trailer, it looks like you'll experience each step Sora took in a crunch, and you'll get the feeling of him stepping off stone to the top. In the demo, it felt like you were on a slip and slide sliding with your knees. Also, due to that lack of feeling, it is very easy for you to misunderstand the input direction and fall off the Titan if it doesn't feel like you're connecting the dots hard enough. But that's an easy optimization issue that can be remedied, so that's why it gets the ugly. Now to one of the big points everyone's been asking about, the floatiness of Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh boy, do I have this in detail. Try and keep up. So Kingdom Hearts 3 is primarily being developed by the Osaka team of Square Enix, the team responsible for Birth by Sleep, Dream Job Distance, and 0.2, with those games' mechanics and physics having a floaty aspect to them in various degrees when comparing the game to Kingdom Hearts 2. There are many wondering if Kingdom Hearts 3 will retain any of that floaty aspect. Well, when I played Kingdom Hearts 3 multiple times, Sora and the combat did feel like it had a good weight to them and the game played more like Kingdom Hearts 2 than anything else. However, there are aspects of the physics within Kingdom Hearts 3 that do feel like they do have a floaty aspect to them, but nowhere near to the degree of Birth by Sleep or Dream Drop Distance. Here are some examples to better convey this message. In Kingdom Hearts 2, when Sora initiates an opening strike while mid-air, gravity still affects him and he descends while striking. But in Birth by Sleep, Dream Drop Distance, and 0.2, the player only descends after the animation of the strike is over, giving them more air time, but like I said before, to various degrees. Sora still retains this rule in Kingdom Hearts 3, but only for Keyblade strikes. But after the animation is over, he descends rather quickly compared to previous games, and much like Kingdom Hearts 2. But when casting magic, particularly Arrow, Sora descends, which I find a bit odd. While Sora is on the ground, his combos do feel heavy and impactful. However, some of his finishers tend to lift enemies naturally without the aid of a launcher if they're not defeated. Sora will then follow up with aerial attacks that definitely harkens back to Kingdom Hearts 2 memories. In my observation, Sora definitely feels heavier than Aqua felt like in 0.2, but lighter than he did in Kingdom Hearts 2. It seems like when developing 0.2, the Osaka team was trying to figure out and optimize the physics seen in Kingdom Hearts 2, but didn't quite reach it yet. A good effort, and Kingdom Hearts 3 shows an feels like they're making more steps towards those Kingdom Hearts 2 physics, but still aren't quite there yet. A better effort. If you need an analogy on Kingdom Hearts 3's floatiness compared to that of Kingdom Hearts 2, think of it like this. Kingdom Hearts 2 is Super Smash Bros. Melee, Kingdom Hearts 0.2 is Brawl, and Kingdom Hearts 3 is Smash Wii U. In other words, Kingdom Hearts 3 does retain some airtime, but not as long or as drifty as Birth by Sleep or Dream Job Distance. More towards Kingdom Hearts 2 from a 0.2 perspective. This can be given a tweak in physics by giving Sora a little bit more weight or allowing gravity to do its work mid-striking animation. It doesn't feel bad, and from certain angles it does make a bit of sense given the scale of the worlds in Kingdom Hearts 3, so I see why they will want Sora to retain some airtime in combat, since he will be able to air slide towards walls and ascend them or activate athletic flow or shot lock in mid-air, but a balance can be struck, so that gets both the good and the bad. Let's move on to things like Keyblade transformations, swapping, situation commands, and attraction flow. Kingdom Hearts 3 really incentivizes you to use your situation commands in terms of Keyblade transformations, and in the case of the Kingdom Key, second form, as they'll be your go-to in delivering powerful and flashy strikes to damage your foes. Keyblade transformations are activated through situation commands and have unique properties to each along with a timer that determines how long the transformation will stay active. Also, transformations determine a drive form depending on the type of Keyblade, so far it being three different possibilities, being power, guard, and magic. Not only do these forms dictate the evolution of magic spells, but the transformations as well. So there'll be a lot of experimentation in this game to suit your style of play, which is great and it gives players a lot of options when trying Kingdom Hearts 3. But worry not, because this game now introduces Keyblade Switching, which allows you to pick up three of your Keyblades and swap between them freely using the left and right on the D-pad on the attack action. 
This really gives Kingdom Hearts 3 a bold new approach with attacking, stringing together combos, magic, and experimentation. One of my favorite aspects about this system is now you can store Keyblade transformations and combine their powerful combos and finishers in a frenzy of shattering attacks to overwhelm your enemies. When you activate a Keyblade transformation, you can swap to a different Keyblade and store that transformation. When you do that, the timer for that stored transformation freezes. Then you can transform the next Keyblade and store that one and so on and so forth. This style of play, like I said before, is incentivized thanks to the growing number of bigger enemies and such. That is a massive good on this part. Let's get to overall situation commands and attraction flow. There are a bunch of situation commands that will pop up in Kingdom Hearts 3. A train of them will come from the spells like you use in 0.2 that will activate a higher tier of magic. In the case of the demo, it was the raw spells that went into the goth spells. However, other things are mapped to situation commands such as party limits and attraction flow. The party limits come out rather randomly from my take in terms of Sora and the crew just attacking enemies, and there were the Goofy Shoot, the Flare Forest, and the Rocket Ruckus. These limits come out pretty frequently, like a little too frequently. They are fun you can use, but they can get a bit spammy and that interrupts the overall flow of the game. That brings me to Attraction Flow. While Attraction Flow definitely isn't as spammy as the other situation commands, the situations in which they can be available is a bit too often. The way it works is that certain instances in a battle, a specific enemy will be marked with a green timer, in which if you hit it once, it gives you the option to activate an attraction flow based on the area that you're in. A simple way to tweak this in order for it to be not as spammy is to have the command available only when you defeat the enemy, not just hitting it once. The attraction flows are gorgeous and they're fun to control and very useful in combat. Their availability is what really needs to be fixed, so it's a good and a bad. Shawlocks return in Kingdom Hearts 3 and use up your focus gauge. A specific shot lock is tied to your keyblades. For example, the Kingdom Key has a Ragnarok style shot lock named Snakebite, and the Smile Gear has one called the Warp Trick. Each have different effects and properties, and the fact that keyblade switching allows you the choice and chance to select one of three different shot locks is honestly amazing. It really puts the power in your hand. Now, when it comes to refilling your focus gauge, um. Yeah, so the orb drops for it in the demo are pretty scarce. Like when playing the demo, I only did shot lock a couple of times due to this. I guess Square wanted to balance it like this as they were pretty powerful. Also, while on the aspect of gameplay, I wanted to say it was great controlling the Gigases. Yo, honestly, I forgot for a bit that I was playing Kingdom Hearts. If there was a game on its own with just the Gigas, I'd play that. The controls were tight, the movements and attack felt impactful and I just had an all around good time with it. I hope more ideas like this are in the game that I could have a blast with, a game within a game. Hopefully the gummy ships will be this fun. Now let's get to other aspects of Kingdom Hearts 3. The camera. Controlling the camera is pretty on point from what you expect from a Kingdom Hearts game, so that's good. However, in Kingdom Hearts 3, there are certain actions and timings in which the camera zooms and pans towards and in front of Sora or in a degree where it showcases certain limits and attacks. While for the most part, this is appreciated and it works, giving Kingdom Hearts 3 a way more cinematic feel, there are plenty of times where the camera wonks out and gets stuck in an awkward position. However, that in itself is wonky too. There are moments where the game detects that it can't do the cinematic zoom and doesn't do it, but there are times where it shouldn't and it does. That's the bad aspect to it. And once again, it's an issue that can easily be optimized. Now onto the sound. Whoa, this is good. This is all around good. The music is phenomenal. Something you expect from the Kingdom Hearts pedigree contributed from Yoko Shimomura. In the demo, I've heard tracks, both old and new. And the old tracks have been remixed to convey the grand scope of the game. Most notably, Hand in Hand, which plays every time you use an attraction flow. The sound effects are top notch, and the voice acting is on point. Don't worry, Sora sounds like he should be, and all is good with the world. You really get that from when you see him in cutscenes. One of my favorite things in the the game actually is when he goes second form sometimes and you hear him scream like he's powering up in Dragon Ball. Super Saiyan Sora, let's go! So the sound aspect gets top marks and it's all around good like I said before. Let's talk about the graphics. Once again, Square Enix proves that they are the forerunners when it comes to top notch graphical quality. Both combat and cutscenes look absolutely beautiful, and they add a ton of detail and effects in each world that makes Kingdom Hearts 3 one of the more graphically superior games I've seen in a long time. However, a kink in its armor is that while the game attempts to run 60 frames per second, which is awesome, it isn't stable. While I'm sure it doesn't drop below 30 frames per second, it doesn't stay consistent at 60. There's definitely moments where I tried to stress the game, especially with the Mirage staff, and the game itself couldn't hold itself together due to either an abundance of enemies or attraction flow. And this is when it's running off a PlayStation 4 Pro and an Xbox One X. 
Knowing Square Enix and aspects of their quality control, I want to say that I'm confident that the frame rate stability will be fixed when the game goes gold for the consoles, but it looks like standard PlayStation 4 and Xbox One may run the game at a solid 30 frames per second. So that department gets good and bad. Now to answer a couple of questions concerning the demo ease. Like I said before in the video, this demo was presented in mind to be accessible to a wide range of players, so I never felt overwhelmed in the demo. So my guess is that it was either set to beginner or possibly standard. This isn't a huge detriment, as demos aren't meant to frustrate players, especially products coming from Disney. This was made clear from the Square Enix employees I interacted with, as they didn't want casual players to take too much time playing the demo to disrupt the flow of the event. So once the game releases, I'm sure the difficulty ranges of old will be intact. Also, I forgot to mention this earlier, thank god you no longer need finishes to beat bosses. Oh yeah, that's good. The overall flow of the demo of the game felt really good. It felt fast, and fast is good. However, as fast as Sora was and his gameplay is in Kingdom Hearts 3, the, well in the demo at least, it didn't feel tight. There are loose aspects of the overall experience, which I feel is the real core of what my impressions is trying to convey. That Square Enix should buckle down and time the gameplay of Kingdom Hearts 3 from what the demo showed us. And if they do that, then it's going to be one of the most grand experiences you'll ever play. Trust me. Despite that, the overall fun factor of Kingdom Hearts 3 from the demo was great and it lived up to the hype and all the while just makes me more incredibly hyped for Kingdom Hearts 3 releasing later this year. The grand scope of the game is awe-inspiring and really delivers on the message that this game will be bigger and better than past games in almost every regard. The gameplay was incredibly satisfying in its execution and its experimentation with all the options that it gives to the players. The graphics and sounds are what you expect from the gods at Square Enix and despite some hitches in the road from some undesirable aspects that can be optimized, I'm confident that Kingdom Hearts 3 will blow us all away. I hope you guys enjoyed my impressions and early review of Kingdom Hearts 3 from the Kingdom Hearts 3 premiere demo. If you enjoyed the video, please share with your friends, like, and most importantly, subscribe to HMK. And if you want to take it a step further, considering sponsoring me here on YouTube. So guys, until the next Kingdom Hearts 3 video, I've been HMK, and I'll check you guys later. So you haven't subscribed to HMK yet. Don't piss Xemnas off.